Hey guys, Coach Daniel Hammer Tennis. In today's video, we're gonna be hitting with Brian. And so Brian is an experienced tennis player, but he kind of stepped out of the game for a while and he's looking to get back in and play a lot more. And so we're gonna see if we can help him with his forehand today. And we're gonna be mainly doing that by using something that I invented, it's called the swing stick. And so I'm gonna show you how the swing stick is gonna help him keep from hitting the ball late by hitting out in front more. And it's also gonna help him utilize more leverage into a shot. And so, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure to hit that bell notification. That way you're getting notified of all the new Hammer Tennis videos that are coming out. So, let's, we're gonna start off, we're gonna feed Brian some balls, we'll let him hit some, so we can take a look, see what he's doing. And we're gonna do before and after, and then see how and why the swing stick is gonna be helping him hammer the ball. So let's take a look. So we're gonna go ahead and start here, and we're gonna feed the ball, and I want you to hit this ball straight down the service line between the cones. Oops, sorry, my fault. Get a good feed to you there. Good, all right, so let's take a look. All right, so we're gonna look at some of the footage here that we just shot of Brian hitting some forehands at the service line. And so the reason that we use the service line at first is that way we have the lines in the court there so we can kind of see how we're hitting compared to where those lines are. It helps us see if we're hitting the ball in front, if we're hitting it late, and just kind of help us line up a little bit better. And so as we take a look at the uh, footage here, most of the shots he's hitting pretty good in front and his shoulders at contact, you see how your shoulders are still kind of facing the camera a little bit. So they haven't turned all the way and then after you hit, your shoulders are staying square. They're kind of stopping at contact. We're doing a pretty good job of making contact in front. So, all right, so we're gonna hit a couple with the swing stick and we're gonna see if that makes a difference in Brian's forehand. All right, so we've got the swing stick attached to the racket. And so what Brian's gonna do here is he's gonna go ahead, he's gonna take his grip here and hold the racket. And so now he's holding the racket and if he makes an incorrect swing, the ball is gonna hit his stomach. And so what he's gotta do is, he's gonna line the ball up towards his target. He's gonna keep his shoulders parallel with the swing stick. His left hand is gonna be out in a line where the ball would extend. We're gonna turn, hit, and then extend the racket, and we're gonna point the swing stick in the direction we want the ball to go. And that's gonna help make sure that his shoulders are turning, and to hit the ball out in front, he has to make sure that he turns his shoulders so that way now the swing stick has some room to clear under his arm. So if he's just swinging with just his shoulder, which so many of you are, and that's one of the reasons, that's the number one reason that we hit the ball late is that we swing with just our shoulder. The swing stick's gonna hit you, give you instant feedback by hitting you in the belly as opposed to turning first, then extending. So let's feed him a couple and see what happens. We're gonna be facing at about a 45 degree angle to our target line. So go ahead and put, so you turn your foot a little bit more like that. There you go, and that foot's gonna be a little bit wider there. So now what's gonna happen is he's gonna line the racket up to his target. And when he makes his shoulder turn, you're gonna see now the racket has squared right over top of the tee here. And that's gonna help give him a reference point so that way he knows where he's making contact. And then from there, he's gonna extend out to the target. And that's gonna make sure that his shoulders are now turning and he's getting his racket and his arm out into the racket plane. That's gonna help that ball go towards the target. So, all right, let's get to it. Okay. Turn your feet a little bit more at an angle, other way. Face there, that's it. All right, ready? So that's it right there. Good. Just finish at the target right now. Perfect. Do it again. Just finish at the target. Perfect. Swing out to the counts. Perfect. Do it again. Swing out to the counts. Good. All right, so when we're watching the video now, um, after we've used the swing stick with Brian here, you can see that by using the swing stick, it's making you turn your shoulders more and hit the ball out in front a little bit more than you were before. And it's clearly making you extend more towards the target, which is getting your shoulders to rotate more as well. And so by using the swing stick, it's making you hit the ball out in front and turn more. 
just giving us a nice good extension for their target. And so even with the swing stick being attached to our racket, you're still able to hit the ball straight because the mass of the racket and the swing stick together work together. Once you get everything on plane, you don't have to fight it. So most players, part of the reason they're inconsistent is they're fighting the natural path of the racket and they're pulling the racket off the plane. A lot of times it's because they think they're trying to create topspin, they're pulling the racket off the plane. But when you're just using the leverage of your racket and that longer, by extending the length of the racket with the swing stick, you can see here that now we have a longer lever. We can see how by extending out to our target, we get that prying action. We just have to hit the ball off, off the center of gravity. Again, if you haven't watched the video on the truth about topspin, make sure to check out that video. And that's going to teach you about how topspin is really created by hitting the ball off the center of gravity as opposed to trying to brush or roll the ball. When you learn that, then you can hit the ball towards the target a lot more consistently. So we're going to feed Brian some balls now without the swing stick, see if he still retains some of that, and then we're going to take a look. So let's get to it. Over the line, extend out towards the cones. And so work on turning just like we were with the swing stick, contacting the ball, good, contacting the ball out in front, good. So reach for the cones, extend, and rotate, good, good. Start that racket back, good, good. All right, so we're gonna look at some of the shots here that Brian hit um, after using the swing stick. And you can see getting good contact out in front, good extension to the target. And now we're seeing a little bit more of his back on our side view, so we know that he's rotating his shoulders better. So he's using his major muscle groups to hit the ball. So instead of just using all arm to hit the ball like he was before, now he's turning and he's using those shoulders, which is the real driver of our stroke. So he's using that shoulder to drive the ball to the target. And so you can see here how on all these, we're hitting out in front, turning and extending. It's more efficient stroke now. And so how did that feel compared to before? How does that feel? What are the two of the differences that you're noticing? Yeah, it feels better. It feels more natural. Um, it's, uh, I'm using more of my body. Uh, I would tire probably a lot less using this way, so I'm using more muscle groups than just all arm. Good, good. And so, and that's the key here. So guys, so make sure that when you're out there practicing, you want to make sure that you're rotating and you're using your body, getting that ball in front and using that leverage to hammer the ball. Thanks for watching guys. And we're going to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Coach Daniel, we'll see you guys next time.